Hello, welcome to the latest edition of Huge Man, Tiny Car. This is a classic Mini, and it took a lot of yoga, two bottles of baby oil, and a long pointy stick to fit me in here. And do not ask where the stick went, but oh, it was worth it. I have always wanted to drive one of these, and it's everything I hoped it would be. I wish every CEO of every car brand currently obsessing over 700 horsepower, three-ton performance SUVs would just drive one of these and be reminded that sense of speed, tactility, so much more important than actual speed when building a driver's car. Anyway, not the point of today's video. I'll get to the point. This Mini, as you can probably tell, has been turned electric. And it suits the car beautifully. It's faster, even lighter, than it was as a petrol car. It's a lovely thing, but it's not cheap. This exact Mini that I'm driving, on top of the price of the donor car, will set you back about £40,000 in retrofitting componentry and installation. 40 grand! And the thing I want to find out today is, will this technology, will retrofitting, ever become affordable enough to be something more than the indulgent pursuit of wealthy hobbyists? Will converting your car to electric ever be a valid option for someone who just wants an electric car on the cheap, but doesn't feel like getting a whole new car? Well, to find out, we've come to Bristol, about 10 minutes from our office, actually, to visit a company called Felton, who design and manufacture EV retrofitting componentry. And we're gonna find out from them just how cheap we see this technology becoming in the future and just how big a part it could play in our sustainable future. First, I'm gonna drain this battery. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our live shows being held around the world in 2023. Up next, we're back in the UK with Fully Charged Live UK South this April and Fully Charged Live UK North in May. Some of you might remember that last year we paid a visit to a company in France called Transition One, founded by a lovely charismatic chap with an excellent beard by the name of Imeric Libo. His goal was and is to create an ultra affordable, ultra simple, one size fits all EV conversion kit that can be dropped into basically any car going and cost you no more than 5,000 euro after government subsidies. It's a wonderful idea, but it would be fair to say that he and Transition One are still a ways away from turning that into a reality and anywhere near that price point. And that's why we've come to chat with Felton today. These guys design and manufacture every component required for EV conversion. So they should have a better idea than anyone as to just how affordable this technology could become and how long it's gonna take us to get there. What we have here is a lovely old Mini and all the bits that you guys design and make to turn a lovely old Mini electric. Explain like I'm five, run me through all the kit that we've got here. So here we have a, a complete Felton Electrolyte System Mini bolt-in kit. Um, so this will take your classic Mini with your dirt or petrol engine and convert it to electric in probably about a day, roughly. Installation. If, installation. As long as the car is not a rust bucket, which is quite a common problem with minis, as we know. Um, so here we have everything let out. We have a front battery box with subframe. So this is an original mini subframe, so it just bolts in like for like from the original. Um, on here we also have a 70 kilowatt motor with a single speed gearbox. So we haven't got any gears, it's just nice single speed diff in it like you get on a, a new OEM. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the inverter up here, all the liquid cooling system, and there's a hidden brake pump down there just to maintain the servo. Um, and then we have, I suppose, the sort of more exciting bits in that we have a nice gear selector down here, which basically gives your drive neutral and reverse. And it's got a little lift up to go into reverse just to meet the European standards. And a they, lovely click. And a lovely click and it's nice and it's billet aluminium and you can put different stickers on it and all sorts of stuff. But we also fit um, a new throttle instead of the little tiny middle mini throttle pedal, which makes it a lot smoother. And we fit a crash sensor in case you ever crash it, it shuts the hate speed down. So it makes it safe for the emergency services. And we fit a brake sensor, which means that we can actually have dynamic regen. So the more, the more brake pressure you put on, the more regen it puts on. Nice. So it actually helps you with your braking with the mm. car, which is really, really exciting. Then in addition with this, we've done some custom software. So we've got a level of traction control. So it won't let the wheels spin and stuff like that. So that's really fun, especially now we've got nearly 100 brake horsepower in a Mini, which is a little bit of a handful. 
So this is a bracket, which Chris has just informed me in great detail, buzz bar. This is a buzz bar, which uh, is a thing that I know what it is. And uh, what you can see is that this is a really beautifully made component. It's sort of rubber coated, which gives it a little bit of extra durability. And the important point to know here is that these guys are not trying to do this as cheap as possible. This is not bargain basement component tree. It's already quite expensive to build the kit to convert a car to electric. So while it's still expensive, they're making an effort to do it really nicely. Once they've earned a reputation for being the best in the biz, and once the price of batteries and other things come down a bit, then there'll be room to start thinking about safely cutting some corners to make it even cheaper. In the rear of the car, which is sort of where the fuel tank was, you have a charger, uh, which is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt, so it's about three hour full charge mm -hmm. on any normal Type 2. We do a Type 1, Type 2 charge port that actually goes into the original fuel bowl hole in the nice. mini, like there, That's cool. yeah. without any modification. That was a bit of a nightmare because it's yeah. so tight. Um, we have a battery pack that goes in the rear to help our get our weight distribution correct. And then we have a DC to DC, which basically works like an alternator just to keep the 12 volt system topped up. Um, but overall, it's full bolt in, no modification to the original vehicle, and it weighs five kilos lighter once it's converted, which is quite a surprise for most people. It's actually slightly lighter than original. I mean, that's, that's going to be completely shocking for some people to hear because everyone assumes that an EV conversion means adding half a ton of weight, but I guess you've just been clever with the packaging and been relatively conservative with how much battery matter you're putting in. Yeah, so we're at 19 kilowatt hours, which is about 110 mile WLTP, um, which in a Mini, to be honest, you don't need much more than 100 miles. It's a city car, you pot around on it. Um, and so you can do little motorway journeys, but it's-, it's 100 it's, miles in a Mini, your spine yeah. needs a break, right? Yes. <laughs> So this is quite interesting. This is the universal battery pack that these guys make. This is for the Land Rover Defender, but because it's just a big square thing, it will actually fit into a bunch of other models. Unlike that mini pack that's really fiddly and has a very specific shape because the mini's so small, because you have to be very careful with what you design so that it fits properly. This, you can drop it in the front of a Landy Defender. You can drop it into the front of a bunch of other stuff, and then you just make the right sort of brackets to fit it in properly to that particular model. What we're seeing here is that Felton already has one eye on the mass market and building stuff that's really versatile, fits lots of different models and will therefore be a little bit cheaper to buy and install. And then what's the damage cost wise? So someone has a donor car, they go to a retrofitter who use your component tree for the full kit, what are they gonna be? Well, first of all, what are the, what are the retrofitters gonna be paying for the full kit? So a retrofitter for us, so if we supply to a retrofitter, it's 27 and a half thousand plus the VAT for a full kit. Um, and that includes the gauges, which I don't have here right now. Um, so there's the three gauges to go, to go across the dash. Um, and that's the full kit as you see here, basically including the subframe and the sump guard and all that stuff. So it's, there's nothing missing, all the nuts, bolts, connectors, you're not having to buy all these other extra bits. Um, so we, we have a couple of retrofitting locations spread globally. The main one we're working with a lot at the moment is Recharged Heritage, mm -hmm. which is a spin-off from BMW Recharged. So they can actually use the BMW badges and stuff on the cars. So with the Recharge guys, you can take a Mini in that you own already and drive it away in about a week of a full conversion. I think it's just over 40,000 for that sort of service, or they can find a car for you, convert it. Because it's done through Mini Sport, they can do a full restoration. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've been doing Minis since the 60s. So they, they, you know, they were around at the start. So the, the quality of workmanship that they can produce, and it could pretty much be a brand new Mini. Um, but the, the fact of the 40-ish grand mark, take a car in, come back out, it's on par with the Model 3s and stuff like that. So maybe people will go to classic rather than brand new, but you never know. Ah, you don't see that every day. Wall of Tesla motors, that's Model 3. Up the top there, this is a this is a Model S performance. That's about 600 horsepower of motor just there. Uh, these are for the Porsche kits that these guys make. If you need a 400 horsepower electric motor, buying one of those brand new is gonna set you back about 20 grand at the moment. So for the high performance cars, they use repurposed Tesla stuff. For the Minis and the Landys, brand new motors that they make here. So the batteries are the standout cost. They will slowly come down, um, but I can't see it happening for a couple of years because the demand is so high for the supply of the raw materials at the moment that there's just not enough anyway. So most of the stuff comes out of China currently, apart from batteries and stuff that we use in some of the other builds that come from LG um, in Europe. But I'm hoping that 
in America and other countries, they may start bringing battery facilities online over the next couple of years. Then mm. we'll be able to source more locally rather than bringing everything out of China every time. And that really would drag the cost down quite dramatically yes. once we get sort of more batteries being built in yeah. more places, right? That makes a big difference. And also the kits are going to help bring the cost down because we're going to start building like a mini kit, one every week. Once you get to that point, you're not doing one-offs. I think a lot of the conversion industry up to now has been a one-off of that or that. So you end up sinking hundreds of hours of labor in to make one. Mm. Whereas with this, we're making say 50 of them in a year. Therefore that, that design and development spread over it. Mm. So once we get to a really efficient state where we're turning them out regularly, we can start really bringing the cost down because we know our, our overheads are constant, our cost of materials are constant, and that, that's what makes a massive difference. VCU, the brains of the car, designed here, made here, and works using software, also designed here. These guys do everything. Some kits will be universal for various models, but really every car is going to need a few unique parts in order to be yeah. compatible for conversion, isn't it? Sure. I mean, one of the things we've been closely working on now is components that all work nicely together. Mm. So the EV shops out there that are doing lower numbers aren't having to find bits to work with each other or do the software to interact. It, it'll all be pre-done for them. Um, with the new universal pack that goes in the Defender, for instance, that fits in multiple vehicles. So it'll fit in Jeeps and Broncos and Mustangs and so many different vehicles that we can build, say, 200 of them in a year and push them out. And then those conversion shops haven't got to keep doing a new battery pack development every single time. They just take a pack from us, drop it in, and they do the other bits, which is the motor mounting and stuff. But to be honest, that's the bit that doesn't take that long. The design and development of the battery pack itself is where all the time and energy goes into, and it's the, the most dangerous bit because that's where all the HV stuff goes on. So that's where you hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing. Um, which probably leads me on to the fact that we do a lot of training now. So one thing we've learned in the market is that it's fine having these systems, but you need to be able to train the people how to use them safely. So we've got our training room with our City and Guilds accreditation, so we can do level two, three, and soon level four in City and Guilds training, just to give those people the qualifications they need to actually work on these systems and work on just modern day EVs, because there's going to be an awful lot of work with them coming along. And all of these things contribute to the currently high cost of converting a car. We've got the fact that batteries are expensive right now. We've got the fact that you're having to design these components from scratch through a process of trial and error. And we've got the fact that there's not that many mechanics out there right now that know how to fit this stuff. And it's up to you guys to train them. Okay, I'm just going to put the question to you now. This is the big one that we've come here to get an answer to. Do you see a future where people who've just got a regular old banger that they're fairly fond of would prefer that it was electric, don't have the resources to buy a new car. Do you see a future where it will be genuinely an option to retrofit that car, turn it electric in a more simple and cost-effective way than getting a new one? I think eventually, yes. My concern I have is how long it will take to get to that point. It's sort of, I think we have, a, we have a window, shall we say, of say five years to get to that point. Otherwise, you sort of hit the point where people will just replace them with brand new cars. So it's trying to juggle that, I think, is, uh, is going to be an interesting task. I mean, and there's not a huge amount of incentives out there for people to do it. Mm. I think that's the other thing I think we struggle with a little bit is that you buy a new car, you get an incentive to buy a new electric car. But if you convert a classic, which is actually more environmentally friendly to convert it, there's no incentive to, to push people to do it. Um, the other thing that's been putting a lot of people off recently is the lead times. If you go to most of the big converters out there globally, they've all got two year lead time. People don't want to wait two years to get their car done. So the kits like this will really help speed that up to months rather than years. So that should help a lot more people get into classic, classic electric vehicles a lot faster. Um, but then there's also other work, like we, took, we did work with BMW on this. So some of the OEMs are really now starting to look at how can they retrofit their past vehicles mm. and make them retrofitable into the future because the circular economy is going to have to come into play at some point. They can't just keep throwing them away all the time. Ah, don't mind me, just charging my Polestar up quickly using a bi-directionally charging electric classic mini. It's not something I ever thought I would do, to be honest with you. What do we make of all this then? Do we see EV retrofitting having a real part to play in our electric future or will it always be an expensive hobbyist's game? Well, I'm optimistic based on what I've seen here today that it really could play a big part in our future. What we have to remember is that this kind of stuff is in its infancy. This is new. One fine day, mechanics will be able to open up their computer. They'll have a file for each car in the world with all the CAD models for all the pieces that you need to retrofit 
they'll download the files, they'll 3D print the pieces and it'll be so, so easy. But right now, these guys here are doing all the front end work required to make that happen. They are painstakingly designing the pieces that are needed in order to facilitate that one model at a time. Beyond that, batteries are still expensive. Supply chain issues are ongoing. All of these things are contributing to the current high cost of this sort of work, but it's gonna drop sharply over the next few years. The question is, will it drop fast enough? Because as Chris quite rightly says, it is a bit of a race against time. 10, 15 years from now, most people will have already replaced their car with an EV. So ideally, we want this to become affordable and accessible sooner rather than later while people are still smoking around in old petrol bangers. Fingers crossed that we do see this playing a big part in our future because it just makes too much sense of course we should try to repurpose as many existing cars as possible before building a load of new ones. So there we have it, Felton, EV conversion. Not just for posh old blokes in tweed suits, as it turns out. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.